Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a detailed look at Storm Franklin which has recently been named by the Met Office earlier today and it's going to be affecting many northern areas uh, and especially Northern Ireland where we do have more amber warnings in force. It's uh, the third storm we've seen this week as this extremely stormy period continues with this powerful jet stream. All areas are going to be seeing some more strong winds and some squally heavy rain and maybe even some snow, especially further northwards and westwards. Um, and we continue to see very unsettled conditions. Now, one thing I do want to point out, this is going to be this storm is nowhere near as strong as Storm Eunice. Um that had, of course, widespread amber warnings and red warnings, but of course still can cause significant impacts because a lot of infrastructure, trees, power lines, as I've said in the last few videos, will have been damaged or weakened by um, Storm Eunice or Storm Dudley. Uh, may have not been taken down, but damaged, and it means even a weak gust of 50, 60 miles per hour can cause significant damage. So yes, another name storm coming in over the course of today into tomorrow. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we do start off, have a look at the live radar. You can see we have the weather fronts and precipitation associated with Storm Franklin moving through at the moment. Very heavy rain across pretty much all areas. Um, no areas really escaping this rain. The far south and southeast currently doesn't have the very heavy rainfall, but it is moving in. This big mass of rain is the um, associated weather fronts. Warm front now spreading through uh, into Europe, uh, Denmark, and this is the cold front now with a squall line along it as we do have a very big temperature contrast. As we'll see in a minute um, with the UK Met Office run, it's about 9, 10 degrees ahead of the front and around 3 or 4 degrees behind the front. And you can see even some showers starting to turn more wintry. And as that cold air undercuts even more over the next few hours, uh, we are potentially going to be seeing quite a lot of widespread wintry showers. Nothing too significant, but could be quite uh, interesting conditions, quite wild conditions out there this evening as those winds pick up as well. Amber warning, as I said, is in force uh, around midnight, uh, as we'll see in a minute. But a squall line moving through could be severe conditions along that. Winds could become very gusty with squally rain could go 60, 70, or even higher miles per hour. And of course, torrential rain along that with these dark red colors. So please do stay vigilant out there. And if it does, if you do get caught in the squall line uh, and it's dangerous conditions out there, make sure you do take some shelter. If you are driving, maybe just pull aside uh, to the road uh, for a period of time. Because of course, it is only short period, 10 to 20 minutes maximum, really, these squall lines last as they do move through quite quickly. But severe conditions within that, and it could cause some disruption. Elsewhere, though, still a lot of heavy rain, and this squall line will be heading southeastward. So if you are in the southeast at the moment, it doesn't look too bad. A lot of cloud around and some patchy on and off light to moderate rain. But this heavy rain is spreading southeastwards. And, of course, a lot of convective showers pined with the centre of Storm Franklin just off into the North Atlantic. And that will be spreading in over the next sort of six hours, bringing in the strongest gusts of wind. So severe conditions for many areas continuing over the next 20 Four hours and this stormy weather doesn't look like it's going anywhere at least for the next few days now if we do have a look at the latest from the met office twitter page you can see 11 28 this morning storm franklin has been named the storm is forecast to bring strong winds and heavy rain to the uk on sunday and monday so yeah severe conditions once again affecting further northwards than storm um eunice uh affecting northern ireland northwest england scotland as well uh, and again severe conditions from this as it will be impacting areas that were affected significantly by Storm Dudley and Storm um, Eunice as well. So if you do have a look at the weather warnings, you can see at the moment we only have yellow warnings in force, widespread yellow warning covering all of Wales, most of England, apart from the far northeast, much of southwest Scotland and all of Northern Ireland. You can see uh, started at midday today, so only a few hours ago, and expires at 1 p.m. tomorrow. So just over uh, around 25 hour warning. So quite a long period of very strong winds. Um, and you can see if we have a look at the stronger de uh, the further details. Um, winds are likely to strengthen across England and Wales on Sunday as an increasingly squally band of rain moves southwards. Southeastwards, that's that squall line we we were looking at. Gusts of 55 to 60 miles per hour are expected widely around south and west facing coasts, but possibly also briefly inland. There's a chance a few exposed places could see gusts near 70 miles per hour. Now remember with Storm Eunice, widely it was 70 to 80 miles per hour, so nowhere near as strong. Only the real peak gusts with this storm will be impacting that sort of level, but as I said, still cause uh, still could cause 
cause some disruption. Strong, strong gusts associated with blustery wintry showers will follow from the north. A swathe of very strong winds will reach Northern Ireland later Sunday evening. It's associated with Storm Franklin. These very strong winds will spread to many other western areas, central and southern areas over the night. Overnight, widely gusts 50 to 60 miles per hour. When west facing coastal districts could see 65 to 70 miles, 75 miles per hour, perhaps 80 miles per, per hour as well. Again. As I said, could uh, it, it, the main impacts from this will not only just be from the strong winds, but also because of weakening from Storm Eunice, as said here. Um, in the south, these strong winds may hamper or slow ongoing recovery efforts in the wake of Storm Eunice. Winds will ease steadily from the northwest during the remainder of Monday. High impact and increasingly likelihood as well. Could perhaps see a more widespread amber warning, um, but we'll have to see. However, Monday... Uh, actually, we'll have a look at the rain warning as well, briefly. Um, this has been in force for a day or so, but you can see um, from earlier today all the way till 6pm, and it's for that squally band of rain. For the details, again, 20 to 40 millimetres, some areas 60 to 80 millimetres, and it's falling on saturated ground, so it could be a bit of flooding. Of course, these areas saw heavy snow yesterday, so a big um, widespread um, change in conditions, so it could be some severe impacts with this, so please, if you are in this area, uh, do stay away from any flood waters, and if you are going through that squally band, do take the necessary precautions and stay safe. Now, through Monday, we have an amber warning put in force from midnight tonight until 7 a.m. tomorrow, so main impacts will be um, while most people are sleeping, but as you wake up for rush hour, there could be trees down, there could be some disruptions, so please do make uh, take that into account for uh, any journeys you're making tomorrow morning. Um, as I said, very, uh, a spell of very strong winds associated with Storm Franklin will bring disruption to parts of Northern Ireland early on Monday. Uh, again, gusts of 60 to 70 miles per hour expected widely, perhaps 80 miles per hour briefly near exposed north uh, northern coasts. Highly likely and pretty high impact as well. So please, if you are in this area, do take the necessary precautions and stay safe out there um, tomorrow morning. If you have got something on tomorrow morning, perhaps if you are able to, postpone it to the afternoon when things are a little bit clearer. Um, um, but yeah, please do take the necessary precautions um, as on everyone um, to make sure they stay safe. Now, if we do have a look at the latest from the UK Met Office run, have a look um, at what it's showing today. Now, you can see the weather front's approaching um, over the course of today. Rain is actually a bit more widespread than this is showing. You can see that score line forming. And as I'm recording this, you can see the score line there. And it real peps up as it moves southeastwards. It's intense bad rain. It should reach the southeast by around 5, 6 p.m. So by the time many of you are probably watching this, you're probably under that squally band. As it does move through, you can see behind it, Big smackering of showers, turning quite wintry, even to low-lying areas across Ireland, Scotland and Northern England, and perhaps even across parts of the Midlands as we head through the evening. And then you see again another occluded front through the early hours, and that's associated with the centre of Storm Franklin. That is moving in. Um, and by around uh, lunchtime, those winds should start to die away and the showers should start to die away as well. So we see, do see a brief bump of high pressure with things turning a little bit drier for the afternoon. For another weather front starts to push in, another squally band of rain. Again, probably stronger winds with that as well. We'll have to see exactly what weather warnings are associated with this. And then another band of rain with wintry showers behind. And that's a repeated thing we're going to be seeing over the next few days with... Um, alternating mild and colder sectors, big temperature contrast is going to cause these squally bands with wintry showers behind, big temperature drops with that as well. Now if we do have a look at the wind gusts, you'll see it's nowhere near as intense as Storm Eunice, but still pretty strong indeed. Um, now as we head through the course of this afternoon, you can see gusts starting to pick up along that school line, 60-70 miles per hour, and you can see that line along there, inland 50-60 miles per hour, so as I said, school lines can pick up those winds very quickly but the strongest winds are going to be in behind that across northern ireland perhaps 70 80 90 miles per hour possible out towards the ocean but it is weakening the storm as it moves south eastwards so it's the strongest when it's out in the north atlantic is weakening as it moves over land um, and we're seeing widely gusts of 50 60 maybe 70 miles per hour over higher ground or exposed areas across the coast as well now remember storm eunice we were seeing widely 70 to 80 miles per hour these purples we're seeing just out in the ocean uh, across Northern Ireland, a bit in the Irish Sea, we were seeing those widely across inland areas, uh, across most of England. So, no one near as strong as Storm Eunice, but there still could be gusts on that scale for some. As it does move through, things turn briefly drier and um, calmer through Monday afternoon. As I said, brief 
a bump of high pressure before we see another weather front approaching from the west stronger winds associated with that but nothing too crazy and then again just see repeated bouts of stronger winds but at this stage nothing massively uh, unsettled in terms of indicating another name storm so perhaps this is our last name storm for a, for a bit but still after this still very unsettled conditions with a lot of rain stronger winds and potentially some wintriness around as well now if we do have a look at the max temperatures you'll be able to see the score line really really quite well now as the score line approaches you can see ahead of it 10 11 degrees and um, behind it you can see those temperatures dropping down to maybe three four five degrees and colder as the sun sets this evening all areas by this evening getting down to around uh, low single digits if not freezing and that's where we can see still see wintry showers around so further northwards and westwards highly likely if you are seeing some showers and they are pretty heavy there'll be a wintry nature maybe some big snowflakes uh, maybe some grout pool some sleep with it um, even to low-lying areas could be seeing some wintry winteriness within the showers not expecting any massive settling unless you are over higher ground and see some more persistent snowfall but for some of those snow lovers out there uh, maybe a bit of lamp post watching this evening for any of these wintry showers moving through so do check out on uh, check out the radar for that beyond that though as we wake up through monday Things are still chilly, but a bit milder in the far southeast, 9, 10 degrees. Remember, we are starting to get to the time of year now where the sun is increasing in strength. And unless we have really cloudy, rainy, snowy conditions or uh, or really bitterly cold air masses, those temperatures um, do normally get up to high single digits, um, if not getting towards 10, 11 degrees. Now, still cold over sort of course, uh, over Scotland. I know, of course, Monday evening, a bit chilly down to a few uh, low single digits, but milder air masses moving through. For another colder air mass spread through, as I said, oscillating air masses. On Wednesday evening, quite cold. Uh, sorry, Tuesday evening to Wednesday, quite cold. And then Wednesday, getting a little bit milder in the south, 9, 10 degrees, around average, really. But further northward, still quite chilly. And we're going to see this oscillating temperature contrasts. And then by Thursday, quite a chilly day, only 3 to 6 degrees, as we have quite a cold air mass spreading through. But beyond that, things um, still remain quite cold, could, could be quite harsh frost overnight Friday in the north, but it is only temporary. We're likely to see those air masses rise up once again as more low pressure comes in from the west. So definitely some colder conditions coming up, definitely some mild or average conditions coming up, uh, and we'll have to see exactly how that does play out. But a lot of up and down temperatures over the next few days, so do make sure you keep up to date with your forecasts. Uh, as said before, I'm not the be I am not I don't love weather apps that much, but they are decent when it, we have very um, changeable situations like this, and they could give you a good indicator of temperatures, because likely some days are going to be 9, 10 degrees, and by the evening, uh, give it a few hours, could be freezing. So um, do, of course, stay uh, stay tuned for that uh, of course uh, and keep up to date with what the forecast is showing for your area um, as there is going to be quite a bit of regional differences especially from the north to the south now if we do briefly have a look at the gfs and the gfs ensembles now of course over the last sort of five days we haven't looked at this too much because of course we've been concentrating on the name storm storm dudley storm eunice uh, your storm eunice and now storm franklin um, but of course, it's good to keep uh, keep an eye on the longer term, but it's nothing too different. It's still going to be quite unsettled and stormy over the next week or so. Before in the longer term, there are signals of higher pressure, perhaps returning for the start of March. Now, you can see all these um, low pressure systems moving through, potentially named storms there. Uh, of course, Storm Franklin moving through at the moment. And then we do see repeated signal of a westerly winds, low pressure towards Iceland uh, and southern Greenland. But we see a high pressure build towards Scandinavia and Europe. And it's not going to bring anything majorly cold, but it could bring things a little bit more settled. And we could be seeing some more frost if we do get that wind a little bit in from the east. But the tropospheric part of vortex over towards uh, Iceland and Greenland is way too strong, really, to be getting any bitterly cold blocking conditions in. But we could see some colder uh, dry conditions but right at the end of the run it does look like the westerly winds are winning out once again with that high pressure breaking down so not a massive signal for high pressure but it does look like um, we're seeing a bit of consistency over the last few runs of maybe some more higher pressure building in a bit drier and uh, turning things maybe chilly overnight but in the days if we do see some sunshine it could feel relatively pleasant as we head into the start of meteorological spring into march can't believe we are we are uh, almost into march now before you know it we'll be potentially looking at the first 20 degrees of the year um, give it a, a good few more weeks perhaps we'll be starting to see that within the models as we head into uh, april 
Now, if we do have a look at the GFS Ensemble, see what that is showing, you can see very much up and down conditions. In the south, not too much precipitation, but as I said, it's going to be quite convective based within the showers. I've said that for the last few videos, so Ensemble's not the best to look at, uh, but a lot of up and down, you can see these big temperature contrasts um, right now um, before the school line moves through around three or four degrees at 50 hpa 10 degrees um that's all the surface by this evening down to minus eight degrees at 50 hpa around one or two degrees at the surface so big temperature contrast and then we see a lot of up and down to conditions and you can see in a few days time getting down colder once again and that's where we could see some isolated or oh, some sorry isolated winter showers and more widespread frosts before we see a big temperature rise towards the last couple of days of february before we again we see another signal and potentially another little temperature drop uh, but a lot of up and down conditions generally around average really uh, um, precipitation signal actually increasing in the longer term so we'll have to see exactly how that does play out if we do have a look at the sea level pressure you can see the operational one's definitely hinting towards higher pressure, but not being followed by the ensembles. Interesting to see, because the operational GFS run has been consistent with high pressure in the longer term. But as I said, we're not looking at that in the ensemble. So we'll have to keep, in that, keep an eye on that in the longer term. But of course, we are concentrating on the short-term risks at the moment with all these named storms around with a lot of low pressure. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you do stay safe out there with Storm Franklin. It's not nowhere near as vigorous as Storm Dudley or Storm Eunice. But it still could be severe for some, so do, do please stay vigilant out there and do listen to the warnings. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.